homework time. Yes, happy, happy homework time is here again. Lesson six. Let's start off the right way. The usual fashion by jotting our names down at the top of the paper. I will write my name and you go ahead and write yours. And of course, while we're there, let's put today's date. Don't be lazy. I caught you. All right, today you write the actual date where and when you are in this world of ours. Number one, you're going to be a little disappointed with me, number one, because I'm not going to, like, give you the answers here. You're actually going to have to measure them yourself because you need to learn how to do it. But I'm going to give you pointers on it, on how to do it correctly. So you're to use a protractor to measure the angles and then record the measurements in degrees. Okay, so um, what you're going to have to do, though, this is a, an important pointer, uh, is extend these lines because unless you have the world's tiniest protractor, you cannot measure these angles. And so you are going to have to, I'm going to use my line tool here. I'm going to start right at the vertex to show you here with angle A. I'm going to have to make this bad boy longer so that when I put my protractor on it, and you got to do so carefully, of course, because otherwise it's, uh, it's uh, just, you're going to draw a wobbly line and it's just not going to work. And then I'm going to draw this one a bit longer as well. Now you can actually measure that, okay? And so I'm going to get real sloppy now and just to show you um, what you have to do here. So let me pick a nice light color like yellow. Okay, so you're going to take your protractor and you have to make sure that the circle of the protractor, that the... Uh, vertex of the angle is right in there. Okay, that's important. That that vertex needs to be right in there. Yellow might be a little too soft. Let's go to a nice orange. This Actually, it's not orange. Sorry, it's pumpkin spice. And then you have to make sure that the arm, your, your protractor has arms on it coming out from that hole. And the, it may not be an actual hole, although the ones I like do have that. There are going to be two arms coming out, one from each side. So that's one. And then there's going to be one on the other side as well. You want to make sure that arm of the protractor is perfectly aligned with this arm, uh, which I do not have it there, but now I do. Um, and so that the zero degrees is right on, I'm going to say this arm, but you could do it the other way with the other one. And then you're going to take your, your measurement. Now you know that 90 degrees would be a right angle. So you do have to keep in mind that this is going to be a Q, right? So uh, whatever you get for this measurement here, it needs to be less than 90. And generally with all of these angles, you might have, uh, you're going to have tens and fives. So if you measure an angle and it looks like it's 63 degrees, it's probably 65 or maybe even 60. Um, you're not going to have odd angle measurements here. It's, it's going to be, um, you might have mostly 60s, 45s, 30 degree angles, maybe a 20, a 120, a 130, 150, um, but you're not going to have something like 157. So uh, don't even write stuff like that. Figure out what, where you're probably just the tiniest bit off is, ah, that 157 is actually 160. That's the most common mistake I see here. But now you're all ready to take your protractor and measure these angles and record the measurements in degrees. Um, note again with B, you're going to do the same thing, extend those, and this is again acute. So make sure you come up with something that's less than 90 degrees. I, let me just point out one little thing here. So you're going to put the center of the protractor on that vertex, and then the arms of the protractor, that line rather, coming out, needs to align with one of the arms of the angle so that you have it with zero degrees, okay? If you don't, like if you had the, the projector going this way with the paper, parallel with the paper, that doesn't work. You're going to get some wackadoodle reading, okay? You probably won't even be able to. All right, let's go look at the other ones quickly. And again here on C and D, uh, it's the same thing. You have to make sure it's your protractor. You're aligning the hole or that central point at the base of the protractor with the vertex of the angle. And then there are lines extending out from that central point at the base of the protractor. And you need to align it with 
the arms, or sorry, whoa, that's a crazy line there. Sorry, get rid of that. You need to align it with one of the arms of the, the angle. That's not even very good either. What's wrong with me? You need to align it. There we go. That's a bit better. Okay. So, um, and again, you have to extend these arms out carefully so that you can actually measure them. This is, again, obviously a Q. In fact, not only is it a Q, but it looks like it's probably even less than a 45 degree angle. We could estimate there. Same thing with D. Make sure you have that vertex in the point and then the lines extending from that point on the protractor need to align with this arm. That was a little bit better. And this is again a Q. Let's look at the rest of these now. And let's look at E, F, G, and H, and then there's still an I, J after this, but um, so look at E again, we need to line up the vertex and the arm, but you already know that, but you notice this one kind of have to probably turn your paper upside down to do that one. Now look at this. Is that a Q or obtuse? So right about here, right, that would be, and don't draw this line, I'm just illustrating something, that would be a, uh, a right angle, right? So you know this is a little bit more, so this one is going to be obtuse, and you don't need to write that either. You can if you like. Um, this is obviously obtuse, and again, you need to extend all these arms so you can actually read them on the protractor, and that has to be done with tremendous care. I don't know why they make these so small. You can't possibly measure them. This again, yeah, obtuse, and then we're back to an acute angle where uh, you know it's in that more traditional alignment. Excellent. Let's look at the last two of these. And last up here for number one in I and J, clearly an acute angle, extend those, line up the vertex, align the line of the protractor at the base of the protractor with one of the arms. You're gonna get, probably going to have to turn your paper to do both of these as well. Um, and that's really what part of the lesson is here, is that it's not always going to be that nice, easy, acute angle that's where the baseline of the angle is parallel to the bottom of your physical paper, that you're going to have to kind of get down and dirty to measure these. This one is obviously obtuse as well. So let's go take a look at number two now. And in number two, you're to use the green and red circle cutouts from today's lesson. Now, hold on. If you're like, oh, I don't have those, I don't have to do this. I actually didn't paste this picture in here. This is straight from the Eureka folks. So if you don't have them with you, there's a picture of them. And even if they're not color, it doesn't matter what color they are. So uh, you could still do this. Um, explain to someone at home how the cutouts can be used to show that the angle measures are the same even though the circles are different sizes. And then write words to explain what you told him or her. Uh, so what I would do here, I'm going to switch to green. And let me see if I can, I'm actually going to try, help me, to draw a little green circle on there. There we go. And fill it in with a nice little green as well. There we go. So I would then be able to explain like, hey, if you take that green circle and put it on top of the red circle, you will see that these lines, yes, those line up. And so the angle measurement is the same. So I can write that out. If you center, I guess would be a better verb here, if you center the smaller circle on the larger one the diameter lines or I'll just say the diameters line up So, the angles are the same measurement. Okay, but there is something that's different here. So the angles are the same measurement, but what is different? 
Yeah, yes, the size, but there's something else that you did learn in class, and you can impress everybody by telling them. I'm going to switch to yet another color so that it's clear what I'm talking about here. Oh, I was going to do red, but that's not a good idea because one of the circles is red. I'll go to turquoise. That's probably not going to show up. Let me go to a different color. Uh, uh, quick, 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 orange. Okay. All right, so what is different is this. All right. Oh, that's when you trace it, you can feel it. That, these are very different measurements. So what is it that's different now? Yes, the angles are the same measurement, though the arcs, that's the word, the arcs are different. And that was what you were supposed to get out of, uh, and I'm sure you did, uh, from today's lesson. I think, is there another one? Let's take a look. Oh, yes, there is one more. Number three here, we're to use a protractor to measure each angle and then extend the length of the segments as needed. When you extend the segments, the question is, does the angle measure stay the same and explain how you know? So you were to go ahead, and I'll kind of do one of them here and extend these segments out. And then again with this one, turn that segment out. Boom, there we go. Um, so uh, when you extend the segments, the question is, does the angle measure stay the same? Now there are a couple ways to explain this. One is that you could measure it, extend the segments, measure again, and yes, indeed you do, you will get the same, um, you will get the same measurement, and you can explain that. I measured before and after extending the segments and got the same measurement. Um, the, to me, though, what, what's more important here is that what does not change when you extend those segments? The arc of the angle does not change, okay? So that's what, what I would write. I would say the arc of the angle, arc the angle, okay, this is the arc of the angle, that curve there, and here's the one on, on here. The arc of the angle does not change when the segments are extended So if the arc doesn't change, then what also is not changing? The measurement of the angle. The arc of the angle doesn't no, angel. The arc of the angle does not change when the segments are extended. So the angle measure stays the same. That, to me, is, is what's more important than just measuring it twice. You could use that to give yourself some confidence, um, but you could also, any of us could make a little mistake in measuring. All right, so in, then do the same down there. Measure that one for part B, and then you will have completed this homework time. So I'll see you again next time. It is once again homework time.